Hi, it's Mary and Lynn, and we're uh, just we're gonna do again. a little, yeah, we're on the road again, and we're just gonna chat back and forth with each other on a couple issues that um, came up while we were in Austin this time. By the way, the Capitol was really kind of fun. We ran into a lot of the state house reps, and of course, we had some appointments with senators. So it was super fun because you're just walking the hall late in the day and you run into them. And, and we got to see uh, Representative Shaheen, Representative Buckley, uh, Terry, what's her last name? Mesa. Mesa. Um, and um, Van Dever. It, it, it was really a just, it was great to just bump into people um, that we knew. But uh, one of the things that I wanted for Lynn and I to talk about is how what we're doing is not a right or left issue. Lynn, can you explain why what we're working on and our goals, why it's not a Republican or Democrat issue? Uh, which part? The <laughs> well, the children. I mean, our goal, our mission is to protect these children and to make sure that they're all educated well. Yeah. well as you said. But when you go to the state house, it's not it's not a right left issue. No, the, the, the polarization, the left-right paradigm, all of that is by design. It keeps us in our little camps and, and um, at least in education, as you always say, children don't come out Republican or Democrat. But the, the issue that, that we keep running up against is school choice, and that does tend to be a left-right issue, uh, and the, the right is pushing it. But every legislative session, we get stuck in the, I'm against vouchers, I'm for vouchers. And, and then with each session, the polarization grows and nothing changes. And people can't seem to see, to see like we met with one legislator and uh, their staffers. And they were kind of like, ooh, what, you're not for school choice? And we're like, no, we're asking you to do your job and help us hold the school districts and the, the education agency accountable to what they're supposed to do and every session when you push the school choice nonsense then it just distracts us and it just keeps us further and further divided and and you know we don't dispute that there's an issue in the schools but we're asking you to help us fight the the lawlessness with the law and they just they've given up they're just kind of like you can't fix it there's nothing we can do we just need to burn the mother down and meanwhile there's still even if their choice thing passes it's only a fraction of the kids that can actually take advantage of it doesn't solve anything and so that we want them to see if, if you're going to be pushing this you know false solution just know that it solves nothing for those who are in the schools and it does nothing for the the state or the nation it just doesn't no it doesn't the other thing is i often ask myself because um i am a christian i am a believer and um, I know that there are great limitations to what I can or cannot actually do. That, you know, I don't have the power to change things. That God has the power to change. And, but often I wonder, okay, God, is this school situation, is this where we're supposed to be uniting? Is this the, in order to fix this, do we have to come together? And if we did come together, isn't that what's best for everyone instead of the political polarization if we could talk about the issues instead of the political polarization of it and so Lynn and I are being very specific to find common ground regardless of what the political affiliation is we want common ground and one of the areas that um, that we have found has has taken on a very negative narrative that we hope to um, impact the narrative in a positive way is that there were a lot of films that were made where uh, teachers unions were blamed uh, for being a part of the problem. What do you mean films that were made? Well, there was that whose children are they anyway? All oh, of these like education. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like documentaries. Yeah, and, the documentaries, they all yeah. blame, you know, they all say, and the, one of the things is most of them are not films where people from Texas are participating in it and feeding into it. Because Texas doesn't have the mandatory. The, well, the teachers unions, they, they don't have, um, uh, well, they gosh, don't have collective uh, bargaining. Collective bargaining. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we, the, the, here's, this is this, this is something that people need to understand. We go, we mostly are, are asked to speak at conservative.
conservative events. And you always get the person who raises their hands and says, oh, those teachers unions, you can't get rid of bad teachers and, and uh, teachers unions. Well, there's no question that teachers unions lean left. No question. Politically, they lean left. And they showed some really bad colors, true colors, during the pandemic where they were in favor of masking the children and vaccines and all the, you know, the stuff. But, it, but prior to the pandemic, this is... It, the teachers unions were fighting a lot of really bad bills and I don't know any teachers who have all this power because they're aligned with a union. Most teachers don't really get into act, uh, activism through the unions. So we've been talking to these union members and, and um, well, just teachers. And people, I mean, just, just teachers. teachers yeah. Period. Yeah. And yeah. The, the odd thing is they, that we're, you know, okay, so the teachers that when we come into the schools and we do grievances or when we come to the school board, they believe that we're blaming them for yeah, the failures the attack of the on teachers is yes. real. And there's left, there's crazy, crazy town purple haired teachers who are trying to indoctrinate your kids. Yes, absolutely there are. But the yes. vast majority of teachers are not these crazy radical teachers who are trying to who are trying to impose um, all, all these things on our children. But the um, the Well, it is complicated, but we have to we have to be called out. Those who are doing right. it, they have to be called out. Right. But those who want this privatization model to come in, they're using the the extreme cases to put a blanket over all teachers. And we have so many teachers who are truly conservative, or they don't they don't they don't want to impose left or right on kids. They just want to teach. And so this this all of this divisive all of these divisive narratives those are causing the the teachers to flee the profession in droves. Sorry, that was a bad driver that, there. That's okay. Yeah, there was a bad driver. There, yeah, so wasn't. right. So there are, um, so the narrative, but again, we just want to bring to the conversation, we want to be more inclusive um, and we want to capitalize on where we have things in common. And, and one of the... That doesn't mean we compromise anything. We're, absolutely we're not. We're a spiritual war and there are those who want access to our children they want to take the whole child capture them mind body spirit they want access to the whole child and they want to indoctrinate them they want to do all these evil things to them they see the children as as um little sponges that they can impose their beliefs on them we we, we stand up against that we don't we don't well, we're not inclusive about that what we're saying is the teachers have to be included in this conversation. We need, they're on the inside. We need them to be able to, to, um, to know that we are defending them, that we want them to tell us what to look for. If they, you know, they, they get retaliated against if they stand against these things. So they need to feed us information. We need to build that bridge back to, with the Absolutely. teachers. Most teachers are parents. We need to be able to connect with, we have all kinds of teachers all across Texas who feed us information. They give us tips on things to look for, stuff to research, where to file a public information request. So we, we love that. And, and the, the, the um, attack, we need to get people to understand that all this focus on teachers is really not focusing on the real enemy. And that's the, the bottom feeders, the public private partnerships, the ed tech companies who are using teachers to implement their, the their people programs. who are making all the money and the yes, teachers not are not teachers. the ones. I mean, it's like Lynn says all the time, you know, that, you know, fund children, not systems. And Lynn, that's not what Lynn says, but that's the, oh, that's the marketing, <laughs> that's a marketing tool. And Lynn says, no, 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 follow the money. You know, follow the follow money. Follow the money, not have the, the money follow the child. If you follow the money, there'd be plenty of money that's right. to, to, to let it um, actually go directly to the children and the teachers. Absolutely. So that's, that should be the thing not to fund. We, we think that we should fund syst uh, students, not systems. That's the, the marketing campaign around school choice. And it doesn't, it, it, it follows, a, it basically funds a whole new system that they decide. It's just privatization. It's just shifting the money into private hands. And it's not going to solve the woes of the public schools. And it's not going to, it's just going to create new problems and new bottom feeders. But, but people don't want to analyze these school choice bills and see what's in them. They're just like, just get passed and we'll figure that out later. We'll deal with that later. There's no strings. There's strings. There are yes. strings. So, um, one of, okay, so one of the other things is just that, you know, we want, we want the teachers when we come in and, and then in large organizations, 
we still really believe that whether it's with a teacher's union or a, a teacher group or um, the state house members, that they really don't know what we don't tell them. That we're the ones that are on the ground and on the inside. We see the bullying. We see the TEA doesn't respond to it. We see where they wrote this bill and they thought it was going to do A and instead it did Z and Z was a disaster. And we have to tell them that. We hear this from them all the time. Unintended consequences. And so we want to continue and, and to over and over and over again, we need for people, we need to be able to get in front of people in groups so that they can hear what we know is happening inside the schools, evidence of what is happening inside of the schools, so they know. And in many cases, you're gonna say, but don't the teachers know? Really, they don't. They really don't. And and, I, and then what are they gonna do? Are they gonna go to their right. boss? They, they, I promise you, they get retaliated against. Their hands are tied, and the ones who are emboldened, the bad ones, are emboldened in a lot of ways because they have cover from a lot of the um, administrators, but we, we have to get, like you were talking about, pushing from the ground up. We've got to get that. Yeah. You, you say it. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, in order to maintain the Constitutional Republic, we must continue to grow at the, the local level and get the people at the local level to push up on their school boards, to get school boards back to a representative form of government. No more of this team of eight. And we know where that's coming from. It's coming from the law firms that are approved by TEA, and it's coming from TASB. So we have to break up the this team of eight school board lobbyists and we have to push up and make sure that at the local level whether it's city council or whether it's your school board that you have a representative form of government and then we have to continue to push up to the next level and the next level representative form of government we have to insist upon that uh, your voice matters and um we don't want to create division when we're trying to unite people to use their voice. Well, let, let's use this as an example. So I was asked to speak at a, at a, um, a rally at the Capitol for one of the teachers unions. And huh? that would totally trigger those on the right. They'd be like, oh my God, you're, I, I mean, I'm just waiting for that to happen. And I said yes, because they asked me to speak because they know that we, what we're talking about is true. Yes. And they know that it, that, and the, the words used to me were, we've got to get those on the right to understand this. And we, we have to build that bridge. They know, they know, yeah, yeah. they know that there's a, a real uh, missing voice of parents and people like us who are doing this kind of work, which is a, a kind of a unique role. If you're not a paid lobbyist, right. there's just a, the, there's a whole void there of just parent, regular parent voices. Um, but the, but what they want us to do is talk about the technology and the, they, they're finally getting it that the teachers have been used and the teachers unions are figuring out the teachers have been used for the privatization movement mm, through technology. Yes, there's yes. no, there are, there are no teachers in the technocratic future that there, that is being built oh, with no. our tax, do tax dollars, the bond debt and the buildings and all that. None of that goes to teachers and students. It goes to the those who feed off the, the system. The technocrats, the architects, and the banks. Yeah, they yeah. bought the line and, and the, first. the big, the overbloated administrative. Lynn, I think that's a great opportunity um, to speak because uh, we I'm may not think, say no. We they may, asked me to the yeah, table. I'm going. I think that's awesome. I mean, I agree with everything they do because the the t when you were there, not. The teachers aren't going to know what you're saying. They don't realize this. They haven't seen it. If from we stay in our little echo chamber, then we all just agree with each other, and then they all agree with each other, and nobody's talking in, right. in between there. Right. And that doesn't mean I ever have to compromise anything that you and I are advocating. But no, I, I no, don't no. compromise. No. I, they know but, exactly who I am. I've shown. I've told them, and, and they didn't like it when it was all the pandemic stuff, but. Now we're in a different time. But this is awesome because this is what the we, right lane. You're in the right lane. This is what we have ever, we base this on, iron sharpening on iron. Having conversations with people who don't always see things exactly the way we do and finding the common ground. This is how we grow. I'm but that so, doesn't mean that we, that it's not the consensus and, and, and um, all the compromise. That it's like the dirty stuff. Are you sure I'm in the right lane? I'm positive. It's telling me to go that way. What you're going to get over in a few minutes, where it says DFW 
121. So but right now you're in the right lane. Sorry y'all are having to hear this, but this is what life is like with us. So you're, yeah, you're going to get over there. Okay. And, okay. Um, anyway, so, so that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, just, that is it. Maybe we'll erase this best back no, part. we don't know how to edit. Oh, we don't know how to edit. Okay. We just, so, it, we, you get what um, you get. So you get what you get. We're almost home from Austin. Um, busy trip. We'll be back. Uh, we're continuing to travel. We'll be in Houston, uh, new new speaking places in Houston, and continuing to grow. Uh, we have lots of people running for school board, and uh, we're super excited about where all things are going. And we just want to remind you, um, as we are sitting down with people that we know we don't share um, and we don't align 100%, that we're having conversations that are uncomfortable and um, people don't always agree with us. But a lot of times people teach us things. Okay, and they know what we're saying about the technology. They're yes. seeing it in classroom. The teachers yes. are tired of yeah. all the devices yeah. and they know, they, they've clued in that that's, that's why so much of the money is not going to them or the classroom or their districts where it should go. It's because it's going to all of those contracts and consultants and like I say, the bottom feeders, the lobbyists, uh, there's plenty of money in education. It is not going to the right people. So it's it's time to uh, knock on the neighbor's door, talk to the person who you don't know how they feel, whether you, no matter where you are. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can even be bold. Um, a, a woman in my community came up to me at a restaurant and engaged me in conversation. And that was the first step into me being aware of what was really going on. So you never know. So please be bold. Please step out in faith. And uh, remember, iron sharpens iron. Thanks.